a little bit excited. Um, childish like, but I'm excited. It's first time I've been out properly, properly for quite a long time. So, what I'm doing, um, it was quite popular with the budget stealth camp jobby video that I did. Um, what I'm going to do as a follow on to that is for the people that have been doing this a little bit, they've got into it from that. Loads of people bought all the uh, cheap surplus gear and the odds and sods. So, what I'm going to do tonight, it's only an overnighter, a um, couple of video time. I'm going to go into more depth with a few bits and pieces. This is more for me to get out and enjoy myself uh, and get a video that's not working on the landing. First of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, um, I'd have probably, I won't say jack in YouTube, but definitely knocked on the head as many videos and I wouldn't have put so much time and effort into planning the next few videos. So. Thank you. That being said, what we're going to do, uh, as you can see, just walking through the woods now, uh, Andy's got my swag bag because it's a vehicle based thing. He's uh, He's got that in at camp now, so I've just got my bag on. In the back there, you'll see my waterproof jacket and stuff. Uh, new bag, so I'm trying it out. I'm going to mess about with the pouches, pockets, things like that, till stuff's comfortable and it's weighted a little bit better and things like that but you know what it's like when you get a new bit of kit you gotta play with it so let's get you into camp we'll show you the setup and i'll go through why i like the setup so much So, I'm thinking this is the winning spot, so it's roughly, the tarp's just a little bit wider than your wingspan. Oh. Uh, so I'm getting a bungee to that tree, bungee to that tree. You don't actually need a tarp for a swag setup, it's just, swags are more of an Australian thing, a hot weather thing, all the rest of it. And as much as the waterproof, once you've seasoned them, uh, and they've got the, the nice little flap and everything, there's always that thing that if it does start raining, you kind of want the dry space to get your jacket off, get your boots off, and then get in your swag. Uh, so it just, it, for the little bit of effort it takes, it's worth putting in, especially if you're vehicle camping, it just makes life very, very easy. So we'll get this off. Um, for people that are wondering about kit, I'm gonna go through stuff as I do it. So I've got the Ridgeline jacket, um, that fits nicely. This is the 511 Rush 72. I've just got this. So far, it's far comfier than my previous bag. It's a little bit big for a daily bag, but it's the nice gap between a Bergen and your daily bag. Um, I've got pretty much a full weekend's worth of kit in here. Um, obviously my waterproof's in this section here. So yeah, I'll go through that in a bit. I'm just gonna get myself comfortable. Right, so I've got the beautiful sounds of silence with the Jenny going. <laughs> He's just charging some batteries up. Um, gonna make a brew now, but first of all, uh, just gonna make a little bit of fire. We can stick a brew on there rather than using the gas and things. And uh, yeah, just have a tidy up. I'm gonna set my swag up. Um, I was gonna camp just there, but I'm tempted. It's quite nice around here in case the wind picks up because we do some snow and bad weather and stuff. So I'm wondering if we should string up between there and there for the tarp down and uh, just stick the swag there. So it's, it's quite sheltered. And uh, it's under a yew tree, so I might get some crazy dreams. Right, so this is my preferred heavyweight, comfortable, if I'm not in my vehicle, this is my number one kind of sleep system. 
purely because it's it's just a one shot instant done thing and i like efficiency this is my new one not used it yet um i've not even seasoned it yet which is a bit slack but it's going under a tarp um they're fairly waterproof to start with but for those that don't know with canvas you put them up in your garden hose it all down get it all wet let it dry out hose it all down do this two or three times because what it is where they do the stitching and things it's got to expand and fill the gaps up it's just how canvas is i've had a swag you'll see on my wales trip video where i had one of these and either strapped it to the bonnet of the land rover or strapped it to the roll cage on the roof uh, and we drove around all weekend in the rain no issues whatsoever um the reason i wanted this one one it's green two the layout of it is wider it's it's fat man ready it's comfortable two small people could sleep in this um and then on top of that it's rather than just a little hatch at the end and you have to kind of get in where it's um you know it's, it's a smaller gap this one's more set up for like this now where you can lay in bed with the big door open with the fly net shut but still see over the whole woods so it's just a nicer thing it's not the smallest thing it's not the lightest thing but if this is on a roof rack on a trailer in the boot of your car this has got my sleeping bag and everything in it so it's it's easy so a couple of clips put this here roughly just a couple of these it's gone off it's alright it's just the screen oh right, I've touched it <laughs> roll the thing out okay so it's not huge what we've got we've got two supports so these you don't need these but it's a nice touch that if you want the door open you can actually put these under it adjustable height it gives you almost an awning out um, which is just a nice touch so we'll put them to one side we've got the top bar it's bungeed together so you don't lose it we'll put this like so then we've got generic tent style poles should be fairly self-explanatory to most of you i'll get that one in there get that one in there and then again common sense you've got your loop lift this up and just attach these on it will find its own way even it's not a precise thing it is easy and that's that's why i like this if you're under the awning of a land rover or something like that which i have done this um if i jump in with someone else you just bum under their awning stick one of these up and it's just an easy quick dry shelter repeat for the other side beauty of canvas as well over a smaller tent is you haven't got 57 different layers of you've got to put the inside the outside the this the that the other slide it through all the little bits and on top of it i'm heavy i'm 20 stone so when it comes to air mattresses and stuff they don't like me they don't really work this has got a proper mattress in it that easy then for this bit that down there, hook that on there, open the tab, push apart, pull tight, click. Click. It is, that's it. You've got a sleep system inside here already. Spot to take your boots off. Fly net obviously. I've already got my sleeping bag in here. I've already got a mattress, nice thick. This is comfortable enough for me that I can be on sticks at my weight and be comfy. You can see how wide that is compared to a sleeping bag. 
Uh, I mean, I'm going to get this open and I'm going to get me other uh, little uh, snug pack uh, basher. What do they call it now? I've, I've lost my words. <laughs> my poncho liner bag. Um, as I said before about these ones here, these are a real nice touch. So you can actually just get this get that up here obviously I haven't got the guidelines to hand but that comes out here and look at that Right, so there we go. Nice, nice, easy setup. Um, minimal faffing about. And the biggest thing for me is if it's all zipped up when you pack it away, it's all zipped up when you unpack it. So if it is raining, it's not too bad for keeping your stuff dry. There's a million and one guidelines, things like that you can chuck on it. Me personally, I like the old bungees. Like stick two, two bungees. One there, joined to another one there. It's all green, it all matches. Gives it a bit of leeway when I'm clumsy and I clipped one of them, it doesn't pull everything out. Uh, I could pull, I could peg the four corners down. It's not windy or anything like that. When I go to bed tonight, I'm 50-50. I might leave that open. If it's freezing cold, I'll take them off and I'll, I'll zip it up. You can do that for either side, but obviously you only get the two tent poles there. Um, nice little bit here. You can pull that out. If it is peeing it down, you can have that zipped up and go in through that side or the other side. Uh, me personally, I like that. You can lay in there and you can look out over the wood pile, beautiful scenery. Um, but you know, it's, I like it. <laughs> you, you've seen me use them in the past, but this is a better design. So it's one of them. Everyone's got their own preference. For me, as I'm getting a little bit more I think because I, I, I spend most of my time working around the filming and anything else, that's got to be easy. Um, roof tents are easy, but it's it's one of them things where you're constantly losing 10 to the gallon in wind drag, you're constantly making your vehicle top heavy and handle light crap. It's a lot of money on the roof of your vehicle that can be stolen at any point. Um, are they comfy? Yeah. Are they really, really good if you're, um, you're doing long distance travelling? Yeah. Are they good in other countries where it's warm? Yeah. Is it great in this country? If the weather's all right, you're still going to air them out and all the rest of it. I mean, the hard shell ones are better now because there's less material to dry out and things and less material to get wet, but it's a lot of money in it. You know, when you're looking at 300 and something quid for something like that, that's a full sleep system that you only put in the vehicle when you need it. I don't know. My money's on something like that. I would like to try a, an Oz tent or a Ridge Monkey tent eventually, but as it is, I do like them. My biggest thing is I just like to play with different stuff because I'm a child, but yeah, there we are. Um, someone asked me about the clothes and stuff that I use. So that's a 511 Rush 72 bag, Ridge line jacket, 511 boots, 511 trousers. Um, I tend to layer up with I don't have any soft shells or anything like that. I tend to just layer up on hoodies. So I'll have a couple of t-shirts, thin soft hoodie, bug out vehicles UK one. Then if it gets cold, I'll bag another one over the top of it and put the ridge line on. That'll take me down to sub zero. If I'm moving, then ridge lines, they can be a bit chilly if you're not moving at all because they're thin. But as soon as you start to get, you know, moving or, you know, you're carrying something, they warm up real fast. So. That's the main bits of kit that I use. Uh, then, I think you've seen it, my knife maker. He looks out for me, right? So, obviously, my personal knife went in the giveaway. So I ain't got, I intentionally got my own Bug Out Vehicles UK knife. I don't do bling at all. Everything I've got is either green or black, and he's done bling. I like it. So he's done semi-stainless on the blade. Look at this, and the light's not going to do this justice. 
because inside here is one of them resins where depending on how the light hits it, it looks different. I'm blown away. So, yeah. And then my bug out vehicles prototype neck knife. So you can either tie this on the top, have it around your neck, or there's a little clip that you can take on or off, you know, just for your pockets. People will be asking about the tattoo. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's the blade. It's a miniature version of the big bug out vehicles uh, knife, so it's like a pair, you know, Romeo Juliet kind of jobby. Um, it's slim, slim line with the paracord because if you're wearing it around your neck, you don't want uh, anything too big. Uh, nice little pummel on the end of it. It's got the, if you needed to, it's got the hole here and the hole at the back, so you could attach it to a stick for like a spear for survival stuff. Um, you could replace this paracord with the fire lighting paracord. Um, it's got a nice flat spine on it so you can do your ferro rod. So I've designed it again as a more of a, a tool than a pretty thing um, because I just like black, nasty, tool kind of purposeful. Uh, you can see on the, the blade, it's not a bushcraft tip, it's not a tanto tip, it's halfway in between the two. It's stone washed, so it's easy maintenance and semi stainless. So again, they're not out yet. I've, uh, I've ordered 10 of them and they're going to go on Patreon. Uh, I'm going to do all the gear through Patreon now. It's, it's just the way it's going to go. Uh, people that want to buy all the gear and stuff, it's cheap as chips to be on Patreon. So it's one of them ones. I'm also going to change the tiers up and all the rest of it and shuffle it all around because I've had quite a few people go on the £10 a month tier, get the hat, which costs me a tenner, um, but then do then knock it after the, the first month, which bear in mind that tenner then that costs, I only get eight quid out of that tenner or seven pounds something out of that tenner because they take a cut of it. So I've actually lost three, oh, I'm never gonna post it. So I've, I've probably lost four or five quid by people coming on, getting the hat and then leaving it. So I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna chop it all around. I'm learning as I go. But like I said in the previous video, I'm gonna make that the place with no adverts for the first week on it. I'm gonna do the Patreon camps and the merchandise, things like that, everything through that. Uh, and just make that the Bug Out Vehicles UK kind of thing. Um, and if you're new to Patreon, um, it's one of them things where you've got to be on there a couple of months before it has any weight, because like I say, by the time the people on the lower tiers go on then cancel it, it, it knobs me. It just basically knobs me. So, if there's people that are using Patreon as well, that have got some advice, or anywhere to move or make it better, I'm, I'm all ears because I am learning with this whole YouTube kind of thing. <laughs> so on here, kettle on the go. He's got the generator charging the big batteries up. So he's got all the lights and stuff in here. He's got his big fire pit there. And uh, he's got the kitchen through there. Right, so, brew time, and we've got my adult tippy cup, which is these, if you haven't seen them. You can get these off Dandelandy, um, he's got his little Etsy shop thing. So, it's Contigo, Con uh, Contigo, whatever it is. Anyway, reason I like these, these don't fit in a normal cup holder. Thermal mugs just don't fit in cup holder cup things, do they? Um, every day this goes to work with me and it gets chucked on the passenger seat while I have my first coffee and this is my second coffee um, it, the reason I like it is it's idiot proof it just doesn't it's got a safety catch on the top one safety catch is off press a little trigger brew it's, it's idiot proof and the amount of times I've had something like this and it sat there on top of the, I've got like a workstation between me and the other seat, it sat there or something, you pull out of a junction, it falls over and disappears off down the passenger foot well. If it's a normal thermal mug, it'll empty itself into the door card or something like that, whereas this doesn't. It's, I've dropped this from right height and it's been all right. It's, uh, yeah, nice bit of kit. I'd replace this tomorrow. There's a few items that you have that, if they break, you replace them next day. This isn't, Oops, excuse me. This isn't just a camping thing. This is a uh, EDC kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's also nice when you, you go in somewhere, they've got a canteen, you're not using their cups, you're not using disposable, things like that. I just, 
if customer says do you want a brew or something i go and get that out of the van and i have a brew in that i know it's clean i know it's mine it's i don't know <laughs> it might be being a bit weird but it's just my cup and it goes everywhere with me <laughs> um like i say link down below uh it's dandy landy with the 110 and now is a jihadi toyota driver so yeah them toyota parts are cheap so everybody go buy one <laughs> something i've started um doing is i carry this little bag for work uh just because in the back of the van it's got a jet boil in it it's got a brew kit in it it's always got some snacks and bits and pieces in uh, and a couple of other items just in case i had to walk home that kind of thing um but what i do on like camps and things although i have got a little pouch in the front of here that again i can use as a brew kit and things like that and does have a lot of brew kit items in it uh, i just bring this as well as and it just keeps everything kind of separate as your food and drink um what i do like to do is overcook a little bit at home and then i just backpack everything so like here you've got uh it's just like a bolognese thing so i just pulled two of these out this has already got all the pasta and everything in so pull two of that out that's two people's meals tonight we've got a couple of other bits and pieces we can have these but as well as that it keeps your beers cold um for the first day or something i'm going to get these out now and put them near the fire so they're just defrost um but it, it just i don't know makes life very very easy um you know what rat packs are like i got a thousand questions on the basic camp for the the ration packs even though i explained in the video you pick them up at shows and things when they're cheap um people still wanted links to i don't know sellers at shows not sure but make your own it's, it's not hard <sighs> The rat packs, the Wayfarer, is the stuff that go outdoors in an extra piece of packaging. You look at the breakdown of it, it's, you know, if you wanted to do the Mylar kind of backpack, you can get all that stuff. Me personally, I just use a generic, um, what was that shopping channel or whatever it was, that JML, was it JML? The JML backpack sealer thing, and just the generic bags, they don't have to be anything special. And you cook an extra portion or something like that or you've got some food coming up to date that you're going to chuck out get it cooked up get it back packed chuck it in the freezer and just grab one on your way out <laughs> you know put your, put your beers or something in between the two anyway that's what's for tea it also saves as well because with this you can put that in boiling water and totally cook that up whip the top of it off and eat it straight out the pouch and then just get rid of your, your rubbish, burn your rubbish, pack your rubbish away, what have you. Um, the reason I'm doing it like this now is because I don't have my man portable stew um, to come and cook me something. But as well as that, I'm not having to process, cook, you know, do everything that goes with all the, the kind of things that go along with that. What I'll do in a couple of weeks is I am going to come out and do similar thing again. Um, but I'm gonna, I am going to do some cooking just because I want to. But for tonight, it's a night out, it's a chills night. I want to warm that up, have a glass, and just chill. It's my time off. For those wondering about the bag, it's um, it's like a rip-off of the Maxpedition one. Uh, <laughs> it's Viper. <laughs> yeah, everyone remembers the old cheap airsofty stuff. It's not that bad these days. It's um, not, not the best zips in the world. But they're not far off and for 20 quid or whatever it was off of ebay it's not a bad little bag you know got a couple little bits in there for fire lighting things like that got coffees and things in there then the back pouch obviously i've just took the food out but got the jet boil and a couple of bits and pieces in there so we've got a way of making a hot drink or hot food we've got a way of lighting fires if we had to do a fire uh, and we've got coffees and in there as well there's a little pouch there with some snacks in right so what i'm doing now i'm just getting my bed squared away uh, what i'm going to do this is an awesome piece of kit especially if you're a bigger bloke that doesn't fit in normal sleeping bags is i can't zip mine up it's just not nice it's claustrophobic um so i have a, a jungle blanket uh, th this is a bit uncompressed it's not the warmest thing in the world but it makes the difference and i chuck this over the top half of me so you don't feel like there's a draft coming in you know because your sleeping bag's not quite uh, there but what i'm going to do is for now i'm going to scrunch it up use it as my pillow if it gets really cold pull it over 
this what it is it's um yeah looks like it's some of a bloody lady gaga doesn't it uh yeah it looks synthetic as anything and you know you hold it and it's really really thin but i think the way it crumples up and stuff it holds a lot of air in it so it does stay quite warm i won't be without it it's uh it's a good bit of kit so there we go what i've done um i've just set my bed up set my pillow up set everything ready to go i've got my bag there all half opened and everything um so if i do come over in the dark it's gonna be one of them ones where i can get to everything quickly without emptying everything out because it's a new bag uh, i've just set my dewalt charger up and everything so when i go to bed tonight i can put everything on charge just took it inside i put it there just so i, could, I don't forget when i've had a glass of wine or what have you um i can just put it in the little pouches that are inside everything's doing its thing so can you get my jacket on now because it's it's dropping and i think the naan breads are about ready right so we can cook it in there or we can be totally totally lazy put it in there leave that for a bit till it defrosts a bit and uh, flip it round you will go to the door there we go get that lid back on get that over the fire That'll be saucy enough. Right, so nice and easy now. This is cooked. We've got two of these. One's got pasta and wires and so we'll split this and then split the other one as well. So there we go. We didn't even have the second bag with the pasta in, so that might be a uh, early evening thing. Just keep it in the, the hot water and it'd be fine. So yeah, how nice is it to actually get out? Whoa, COVID cut. How nice is it to actually get out? I'm loving it. It's got a bit of C6 Steve on the uh, sound system in the trailer. I'm just chilling by the fire. It's uh, lovely, it really is. Right, so I'm gonna have a. Uh, I've got a bottle of wine now. Uh, we've got the fire on the go, so I'm gonna say good night now because all you're gonna see from now on pretty much is darkness. So I'll bring you back in the morning. <sighs> good morning. So, went to bed and it was freezing, like really cold. So, got all uh, wrapped up and everything, took all the other blankets over. Um, it wasn't too bad once I actually got in. I decided I was going to try it with the door open. I know I could have kept a lot more heat in here if I'd have pulled the flap down, shut the door uh, and done it that way. But, I kind of want to, because it's not raining, you kind of want to know what it's like for when it is worse if you know what I mean I don't know maybe I'm just a bit weird like that but it wasn't bad it was exactly the same as being in the basher um, the fly net probably didn't keep anything in whatsoever uh, and most of the heat that went past from sleep systems probably went straight out the door but at least I know now I've had other swags and they do keep the heat in well um, I don't know I was just enjoying it it was all right um, the weather did change about three, four o'clock in the morning and it did start to get a bit warmer, so Brucey bonus. So what I'm going to do now, I've had a cracking lion. Uh, it's bank holiday Friday and um, obviously my work phone's, not my work phone, my, my phone's still set up to uh, to go off at uh, silly o'clock, so that woke me up, had a look round and uh, went back to sleep. Oh, I just had a lovely extra hour or two, so... Time to, uh, to put a brew on, I think. Right, 
Right, this was a bit of a risk last night, and I knew it when I did it. So, I put my boots just there, on the little mat thing. I recommend you do not do that. Um, reason being, you shove everything down the bottom of your sleep system. There's tons of room down there. Just stick it in the bottom corner. I put all my tech up here. So it's to hand, but as a rule, I tend to put everything down there. I did that just because you've got this bit over the top of you and I knew the weather was all right, so I just didn't bother. I, if I had the rain, I'd have pulled them in, but don't do it. Not bad night's sleep, quite comfortable. I think the only thing that ever wakes me up is uh, is the cold. I'm a bit of a, a fanny when it comes to that around my ribs, so I do, I do get cold easy and end up fidgeting quite a lot. So I go between deep sleeps, waking up cold, turning over, getting myself comfortable again, deep sleep. Um, standard everyone's a bit different some people feel it in different places you might be cold in your feet what have you me it's my ribs right let's get a brew going just looking what snacks and stuff i've got down the bottom of there still i think this morning now it's gonna have to be a bit of bacon and eggs because i've been doing a lot of work down um for my mate is uh, he does uh, hay and straw so he's just been clearing all the fields and everything um, making sure that uh, he can get the tractor down everywhere so there was all that to burn off the other day so I spent the day in the sun burning all that <clears throat> so yeah it's a bit crazy that you if you're still a bit new to this that you've got bags inside bags inside bags and yes it does add to your weight but Pouches are awesome to put stuff in, but once you open a pouch and you have it open, you can then spill other things out, or as you're pulling things out, you might pull something else out. If everything's got its own pouch and then you put it in a way, you know that that's your full jet boil system. Um, you know that that's your full cook system. So you can pick up systems and chop and change, and I don't know. I might be going too far into this, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I do it so yeah all we're gonna do coffee bag for those of you that like good coffee this is one of my last ones that uh, that Tiny got me he, uh, he sorted me right how can he do I ran out all it is all your coffee is inside it so you don't have to mess about bringing a press or any of that stuff and it's not instant coffee as well so it is just as easy as a cup of tea you can put the gash back in there like brown sugar I'm gonna do two coffees out of this. Get some water in that. Like I said, there's gonna be a couple of coffees out there. What what I do, I make the coffee in this. Um, some people say don't do it because it'll stay in the taste of it if you're cooking other stuff in there I fully accept that, take that on board, it is what it is um, And then I've got the little miniature jet boil It doesn't have its own little uh, clicker on the side but It does pretty much the same job Almost as big a capacity And it packs down a lot smaller Quite like the look of um, the knockoff ones, whether it's, um, it's it's almost like a big pan, um, they look good, but I don't think they'd be as useful for a little brew kit that you take everywhere with you, if you know what I mean. So, what I do, fill this one up, put it to one side, that'll do me for in a half an hour, an hour's time after I finish this one. Um, he just says boiling it up twice, doesn't it? And I'm carrying multiples because I know I can drink out of this and I normally would it's just this has got such good volume I know I can do two drinks at once so I'm using the the coffee because this coffee bag will do probably two three drinks another reason why this one's had to be a bit more uh, a bit more stainless in it Forever stirring things with them. <coughs> Excuse me, COVID. As you can see there, water's down to there now. 
it takes a good chunk. So by the time I pour a little bit of this out, top it up a little bit more and run another one through, there's probably two good cups there. Because this, this is one and a half cups. Yeah, sleep wasn't too bad last night. It was, uh, I think it was just that thing. I, I, I wake up a lot through the night with my back and that. So I think it was one of those ones where you wake up, you go, ooh, ooh, where am I? Listen to everything in the trees and stuff and then fall back asleep. Good night though, good night. No wind, nothing like that, which is always a bonus. Nothing too crazy dreams under a yew tree. Um, if anyone's ever, um, wondering, you'll, you'll see yew trees, uh, Google the leaf pattern on them, but they're, uh, they're extremely poisonous, so make sure you don't ingest any, uh, make sure that uh, when you're cooking stuff you don't use the wood off yew trees, and then it goes on to like, say you're cooking meat over a fire or something like that where the smoke can go into it, that will mess you up. Um, <clears throat> and Bushcraft Steve once got some, uh, he got cut and he got a bit of yew tree, I'm sure it was Steve, in it and it, it would not he, he it played up so yeah just be wary of that if you're uh, if you're ever in the woods not everything is okay just to cook off of or you know you don't want to be cutting any sticks up to use them as stirrers or anything like that little bits of knowledge like i say i'm gonna i'm in a weird position because i don't consider myself as an expert However, I've listened to some experts talk and you think, really? I mean, don't get me wrong, there's very knowledgeable people out there, but there's a lot of people that teach or, or promote themselves as experts and you listen to what they say and they're clearly not that knowledgeable. I, can, I think I've, I've got a broader sense through the vehicle stuff, the survival stuff, the bushcraft stuff, all that stuff, and have a, like a, a mid-range of all of it, whereas some people can specialise in just one or two, don't they? So, that's why I kind of aim at the, the beginner's side and just hit the common sense on all aspects rather than this is how you should do everything. It's like, well, no, this is how I do it. You watch a few more videos and make your mind up. And I think that's that's the way forward. And people will take stuff as gospel. You you look at the comment section of people getting bent out of shape on absolutely a nothing trivial item, leaving comments and things just to prove that they know that one bit of knowledge. And it's like, who really cares? No, nobody asked. It's a, um, it's a very, very strange one. But you go onto their channel and there's nothing. So it's like they like to try and prove someone wrong or get, you know, a rise that way. But they won't put the effort into just to go look. Right, here's how I do it. This is how I think it should be done. It's like if, they, if everybody did that, did that, YouTube would go back to how it was seven or eight years ago when I, I, I preferred YouTube back in the day. Um, I know there wasn't the better channels on there with the high production and stuff for your 45 minute hour long kind of proper epic stuff but there was a lot more just normal people going out and making little 5, 10, 15 minute videos or camp videos and things like that and the reason I like that so much is you'll get someone that's they're not an expert and they just go out and have fun but the way they do their cooking or their making a brew in the morning or setting their tent up or something like that might be totally different to how every expert does it and you look at it and you go that's oh, bloody brilliant because they've just found their own little knack and I think if everybody learns all these little knacks um, it, it just gives you more options that if something goes wrong or something gets broken you can adapt very quickly because you've seen something else or used something else that's why I'm forever using different sleep systems different bags different because I found that there's people out there that are highly, highly trained, but they've only been trained in one option. And you take that one option off them, and they're screwed. Oh. You found that handy. You, you get people that they're extremely well trained, but they've been trained in one option. And when that one option breaks, they just melt. There's no, they can't think there's of no a way around up, it. No there's no, because everything's been dependent on them using that one piece of kit, that one way forever. And that's gospel, but. Well, that's not an option, but just, yeah. So, just saying, I like to dick about with different cookers, different bags, different tents, different, because then at least you've tried it all, and if it goes wrong. It's, it's good to have options, and some, I think some stuff you find either, it might be, it might do the same job, but 
you know when you're fitting it into your kit bag or yeah if you have certain things like your little jet boils some of the smaller cans that you've got there are ideal for you know you can just store them away yes i've said that because you've got the full size one haven't you with the clicker yeah, and it's, yeah. It's, it's too big i need to buy the little ones because i can't store that jet boil in my little bug out bag yeah as as well it takes up because the big gas can takes up a whole pocket this yeah these these are expensive when you work out how much gas you get for your money but i can fit that and all my food and everything for a weekend camp yeah. in one little bag yeah. but yours is better for a vehicle i know i think you just have to gauge your kit to its purpose don't you mm. you got a vessel yes Oh, it smells coffee. Oh, it's proper, proper coffee. There's a sugar in there, but with the amount of... Uh... Is it going to make me go for a pool coffee? Oh, yeah. There's a pool coffee. A pool coffee. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. That smells nice, that. Huh? That's some milk. Uh, yeah, milk could be. I thought I'd bring a little luxury. Gracias. Do you want any sugar? I like a bit of sugar in coffee. Um, I'm good, thank you. I'm going to run another one through it. I'm going to get my money's worth, even on it my own. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go and light the fire get that going. I've got some bacon, I've got some lovely, lovely eggs. Um, then, while the fire's getting nice and warm, I think I'll, I'll drop all this back down again. We're only here for the, uh, for the night, and then what I'm going to do... Wow, that's deep. What the plan of attack is, is... So we've had an overnight video here. We'll get a bit of cooking done. Uh, we might do a little bit of camp craft, a little bit of fixing and pieces like that because we've got another five hours before we've got to get out. Uh, I'm going to go home, edit this one up. You'll have this one, obviously, a week or so after. Patreon should have this in a couple of days. Um, but then I'm coming back again tomorrow in the Land Rover uh, and I'm bringing my daughter with me just because she needs some woods time. She's a, an only child. We live on a street where there's no other kids. Um, she's had months on her own. I uh, feel terrible for her and uh, she's, she's back at school now but they still can't play properly so yeah she's coming out to the woods she's gonna have a play um me and andy are gonna crack on with a couple of little jobs and bits and pieces and uh, yeah so next week's video will be filmed tomorrow and this, this is the beauty of it what i'm gonna try and do i'm gonna try and get a backlog of them so i can put them on patreon for a week uh, with no adverts on then upload them on uh, on youtube and do whatever youtube wants to do these days um and try and get that one. What I need to do is, um, I know people like the walk rounds of the vehicles. I've got a couple of vehicles in mind, um, but what I need to do is start getting some more fully fitted out vehicles to have a look at. So uh, I wouldn't mind like a, another Landy, Land Cruiser, that kind of vehicle. Uh, but I also want to get a couple of, I like the self-build van life vans but I like them with a bit more off-gridy side to them. So it's one of them ones where I think some of them are great for going out with your missus on a weekend, something like that, three or four days. But then you can see other ones that have been fitted out for that bit longer. You know, when it's like, it's set up, so it's like, it's a, uh, you can disappear. This is why I like the overlanding stuff, because the vehicles are prepped in such a way that you go off into the desert for weeks on end and you get very little replant. So it's, I kind of like that side of things. It's one of the main reasons why I've got that vehicle. It's been round the world, literally round the world. It's done Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, been shipped back. It's proven itself to be a decent, you know, long-term vehicle. And then I fitted it out from there, so it's a comfortable long-term vehicle. And I think that's, uh, there's a lot out there. There's a lot, a lot of good vehicles out there. And I want to try and get a few more of them on camera. So if you know people with a, a good fitting out vehicle um, that you think might be good for this, let us know, because I'm going to try and hit um, one a month. I'm going to try and hit a vehicle run through one every month, so you're getting 12 a year at least. I'm going to try and do a video like this where it's a bit more basic, one a month. I'm going to try and get a social camp with all the lads, one a month, so that 
you now, if that vid specific video is not for you that week, don't worry, next week's what you want. And try and mix and match it up like that. And I think that'll be the sweet spot because I've got a very, very eclectic viewing audience, um, which <laughs> it, it's great. <laughs> and I know the people waiting for these videos have been waiting a bloody long time. Um, trying to ask a few questions. I'm uh, just sat going through all my messages and things like that. People are asking me hand over fist, am I going to Billy and Off Road show this year? No. Um, didn't get an invite this year, not heard anything from them. Um, so it's one of them ones. I've always done the, the videos from, from Day Blob uh, when they first started and stuff, and they've always been right happy with it. But yeah, just not heard anything from them this year. So it's one of them ones. I've, uh, I've done enough for them over the years. So. If they ain't got in contact with me, I just don't go. So it's one of them ones, isn't it? It's a bit of a miserable thing from my point of view, but it's just principle, isn't it? Uh, everyone's got their own little thing. So, yes, that's for all the people asking, and there's quite a few of you. <laughs> so, now, um, this year, I'm not making a huge deal out of um, big meet-up shows, things like that, because I think I'm so far behind by just getting videos out there. I don't want to... It's not that big of a deal if I don't go to the big shows because I never get that much filmed anyway and it's not that much filmed for me it's more for the person that's invited me so rather than do something like that I can disappear off and do three days green laning with camping as well which will get far more views anyway so it's one of them ones it's it's a trade-off it's nice to meet up with people say hello um, walk around a few vehicles and things but it's not the end of the world you know not doing the same video year after year after year after year like with the Land Rover campus thing I didn't go to the last one and then this one's not been on but that's good because then when I go again it's a fresh thing for all the new subscribers that haven't seen, seen like the stone circle up in North Yorkshire or uh, across the top of the moors or things like that so it keeps things a bit fresher doesn't it because there's a lot of people out there like probably the best outdoors channels probably Survival Russia it's the last one Survival Russia um, people that have seen it will get that. Everyone else think of someone having a stroke or something. Uh, and he does brilliant, brilliant stuff. But it's very samey, so I don't watch all of it. So I want to kind of break it up a little bit so it's not all samey. So that's my plan. If you haven't gathered, this is just it's a simple camp. So it's it's as, it's a lazy camp, but I think it's needed every now and again because. I'm out, of, I'm out of practice, I'm out of habit, I, you know, I've not been out for months properly. When I do go out, I've tend to got the Land Rover with me, so I've got every convenience and luxury there is going. So, when you go a bit lighter, um, what's screwing me up as well is um, changing my bag. When you go a bit lighter, it's um, you don't have as many options, so you've got to work with what you've got. So, this is a nice touch with, um, just like the basic cooking, I didn't have to carry masses of ingredients in, because... I'd, I'd already got the naan bread and the pre-cooked food in the homemade boil in the bag. It's just instant simple, next to no washing up or anything. There was literally a plate to wash up. If I was on my own, I'd have eaten it out of the bag anyway, so there'd have been zero washing up. Um, for breakfast, could have just had some um, porridge oats and that'd have been that one sorted, but got a little bit of bacon uh, and some eggs, so couldn't do them. It's it's all about like with the swag and the jet boil, um, the nicer bits of kits. When you, when you've been doing this a while, go out with other people and see what options they're doing. So far, these are my favourite little items that I like using. So it's uh, it's whatever suits you. I mean, I know other people like other options like roof tents or Oz tents, that kind of thing, and they are easy. Um, I wouldn't mind doing a roof tank. I haven't done a roof tank camp for years now. I think the last one I had was about five years ago. Uh, we'll have to see about that one. Um, Stu's trailer, that's got the cupboards and stuff in it now. So I'm thinking of... just need to get some offset rims for him and uh, get them so they're sat nice. And uh, I might drag that out once, uh, once the land is up to full tilt and that. I might come out in that and uh, invite someone else out. And what I'm going to try and do is... There's a few people I want to do a collaboration with this year, but they don't really do the comfier side of camping so i'm going to say to them like look you turn up i'll jump in the swag you take the landing have a bit of a change yourself um and do it that way because uh, what i can do now with the amount of kit that i've got i can actually bring people that are into it you know that haven't got the kit that can just stop the night all you gotta do is bring a sleeping bag and you're away in it so i think that might be an option
Right, it's so time to break down this camp now. We've got all the bedding and everything out. Again, this is the, the beauty of the swag. Uh, it's just a one system. Bag out. Charge system out. I did bring a canvas tarp because I was going to put it over it, but once I got the thing set up, I was more than happy. If I was spending more than a few nights in it, I probably will put this up as well. Um, so they could drop this down on an evening and keep it all self-contained to be fair It was quite nice to have the breeze coming in through the mozzie net It was kind of like Basher camping, but with the added bonus of having the mozzie net So you've not got the bugs or bits and pieces like that. So it's kind of best of both I'm biased because I like swag camping if I'm not in the vehicle. This is my option So I'm just checking the little pockets inside to make sure I've not got anything left in them Ah there's the tent pegs. <laughs> I knew I put them safe somewhere. Just check under the mattress because stuff does go under there. Get them out of the way. Drop that down. Before you do anything else and get distracted, make sure your pegs are to one side. Because they do walk. Put them on top of your bag. Don't want to teach people to suck eggs, but the amount of times I see people screw up on this, I just don't think they've ever been shown. Right, so that's all my stuff that's not the swag stuff, that's just what I keep in my bag. Two poles here. What we'll do, zip this up. The reason you zip this up is you're keeping it watertight. Right, so when you roll it out, if it's raining when you roll it out, there's less chance of you getting water in there. Not only that, if you chuck this on the roof of a vehicle and it's raining, you don't want big gaps and things like that to let water in. So, make it its self-contained thing that it's designed to be. Okay, that's all sorted. This side, you know, that's all good. This side's all good. Reverse of what we did before. So we're just taking the little clips off. One by one. Oh boy. Turn that clip off. Turn that clip off. Release the pressure now. If you notice, I'm putting all the poles and everything in one pile. You'll see why in a second. Again, flips off. Pins out. Break the pole in the pile. Get everything tucked in nice. You'll see that the ground sheet is a far, far more water resistant material. So that's going to go to the outside, that's going to wrap it, it's also going to protect it while it's in transit. Yeah, that's quite a good seal, that. <laughs> Make sure everything's kind of in a bit, because you don't want, you want as little of the canvas poking out as possible. I know it's waterproof, but we're going to try and stick to the more man-made, plasticky kind of waterproof on the outside. This is for my OnlyFans account. Close your ears, Ola. This kind of shows how 
well sealed this unit is. Nail. The last bit, just try and push back in, so as you roll it over you're not getting that overlap. Right, so, from here, you've got a big old strap. <laughs> If I wasn't in the Land Rover um, on the way home, and little one stayed with me so she had my sleeping bag, um, I would leave the sleeping bag in here so you just roll it out, your sleep system's in. That's how I had it last night, but I'm not pulling it out of the Land Rover just to do this. Again, strap. That's that one, and away. You've got a, a carry strap as well. It is quite a lump, but in the grand scheme of things, on your roof rack, it's not bad. Um, I like it. It's when you look at the size of a tent, a roll mat, and all the other bits that you take camping. It's just one self-contained sleep system. Uh, I think it's a good. It's smaller than a roof tent. It's bigger than a normal tent. It's halfway in between. I'll live with that. I like it. And not one person's ever complained about me turning up with a Bergen and one of these chucking the Bergen in the vehicle and this on top of it and going out for a camp. So that's us done. Darcy just heading back up to me uh, to my van now. Gonna get home tonight. Gonna get all this footage uh, put onto my laptop. And then gonna get in the land day, jump in it, chuck my little one in, and we'll be back out here tomorrow morning. So, next week's video, I'll be on with tomorrow. So, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. A um, little bit of a disorganised one, a little bit of a, it was more of a chill out camp, get back into the trees, get back into uh, a bit of a, a lightweight sleep system and stuff. I might have played with that, extremely happy with that swag. That was a good, good night's sleep. And even though I left the canvas kind of door open um, and there was a breeze coming in through the fly net it, it was still nice so yeah if I close the door it's gonna be warmer again happy with that uh, yeah it's more getting back into the rhythm of things now so it's still really really cold so it's still a bit uncomfortable tomorrow we've got some firewood to collect bits and pieces like that we need to process that down we've got a little bit of maintenance on the cabin itself um, probably going to go through some uh, basic little skills and stuff with the kids uh, show them a bit uh, and go from there so once again thank you very much first and foremost to the patreons for making all this happen thank you for everybody else for uh, putting the watch time in and uh, if you can give us a comment and a, a like and a share that would be absolutely awesome so everybody stay safe thank you very much see you on the next one bye bye